Hello witches, or those who are mildly curious. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a car safety protection spell jar. Um, all you're going to need for this, of course, is a jar, red twine, some wax, and the list of ingredients that are going to be in the caption of this video. I would love to see your jars when you've completed them, so if you follow me on social media, definitely give me a tag on them, because I'd love to see how they come out. All right, let's get started. To get started today, we are going to need a few things that we have to gather. I will put them in the description, like a list in the description to get us started. But we are obviously going to need a jar since we are making a spell jar. Um, this is just one I had around. I'm pretty sure I got this at Joanne Fabrics. Might've been Michael's, but one of the two. Now, last video, I had a few people um, <laughs> concerned with me using my hands. I'm still gonna use my hands because it's my preferred method, but I did grab a spoon to hopefully make it a little bit easier, um, at least visually for you guys. I know that my altar space is a little bit messy today, but we are going to be tackling that in my next video. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got a spoon. You don't need a spoon. You can use things like a really small funnel, or just your hands it's really it's up to you um but i got one for that today we are also going to need lavender incense uh for cleansing today because we are doing a protection jar lavender is really really good for that so let's get that started So I have a mini cauldron. I know that I also have a very large one and I have an even bigger one in storage, but my mini cauldron I basically use for like as an incense holder. And I have found this little trick. I, now, if I use a charcoal tab, I would just put it inside of it. But if you take the lid and you flip it over, it makes for a perfect incense holder. It's perfect. <laughs> So we will be using the lavender incense as a cleanse for our jars. So let's get started with that. Just like last time, you're gonna wanna try to get as much smoke into the jar as possible. I think it looks pretty cool too. <laughs> but the purpose of this is essentially to cleanse the jar entirely from any existing energies that were left from the factory or similar. Um, of course, you can, I guess, choose to skip this step. I can speak, <laughs> but I choose not. So we've got our jar and we're going to use a couple of different herbs. And also I've got an optional crystal for you guys. So starting off, we've got obsidian chips. Now you do not need to include obsidian chips for this protection spell bottle for your car. I know obsidian chips might be a little bit difficult to acquire, so I'm definitely not trying to say that this is a must, but it is a great additive if you had it, have it. Obsidian is a great protection herb, herb crystal, <laughs> for both um, spiritual and physical protection, at least in my experience. I'm just gonna put a couple in there to start us off especially because it is heavier uh obsidian is heavier you kind of want to start when you're doing at least in my opinion you want to start uh these sort of protection jars or any kind of jar for that matter with the heaviest matter at the bottom um, otherwise what you're going to end up happening is like this heavy matter going ping 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 all over you have a higher chance of breaking your jar that way and it's a really good way to think that you've got some sort of sign being sent to you that your protection is no longer working when in reality um, you just misplace the weight of the ingredients that you put inside of it and misplacing that weight then in turn um, breaks your bottle. So let's not break our bottles. Now the next crystal that you want to add, because yes it is a crystal, is salt. I have Himalayan salt here. It can be any kind of salt that you prefer. Salt is a great cleansing and protective crystal. It is a crystal. I don't care what anyone says. It is a crystal of the earth. It has just got a high dissolvabil dissolvability and happens to be tasty. <laughs> 
So we've got salt. And our next ingredient is salt's best friend which is pepper. Now peppercorns are an amazing protection herb. I pretty much, is it an herb? Is a peppercorn an herb or is it a spice? I think it's a spice, but we're calling it herb today for the sake of <laughs> uh, uh, consistency. Peppercorns are amazing for protection. I include them pretty much in anything that deals with protection magic. In my personal experience, I find that it is super, super, super useful and I've had a really great success rate with it. So I know that I'm, I'm definitely not the first, I didn't invent peppercorns, okay? <laughs> uh, the use of it in protection magic, I'm not trying to say that, but what I am saying is that I include it in anything that involves any kind of protection, whether it is spiritual, physical, or otherwise, I think peppercorns are incredible. So, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. I'm in a smoke haven. All right, now the next herb that we're going to add is more traditionally used from keeping evil spirits away. But when we are considering something like protecting your car from harm, it is, at least my opinion, that keeping things like evil spirits or bad luck away is perfectly acceptable and I include it for that reason. Um, things like bad luck or similar, this herb is great for. And it is dill weed. I am using dill weed for this. Dill weed, again, it's one of those things that is so good for protection. In my personal opinion, dill weed, although it is typically used for warding off evil spirits, um, there's no reason that you cannot want to ward off any kind of evil spirits or bad luck when you're driving. Quite frankly, it, there's a lot of negative energy that people project when they're driving. And it, I just think that some of that can transfer into our own personal safety. So that is why I am including it. Uh, following that exact same lead, we have got wormwood. Now wormwood, worm wood, an easy word to say, is traditionally used for things like uncrossing or removing jinxes simil or similar. Um, I think it's a good protection herb as well for the same sort of thing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have been in situations before when I've been driving a vehicle and I have narrowly escaped uh, an, an accident. Somebody wasn't paying attention or similar and I'm driving out and I just happened to like slam the brakes at the exact right time. Uh, I've also been in situations where, where like an entire piece of furniture has fallen off of a car <laughs> and I have literally narrowly escaped being hit by it. And I personally chalk this up to Wormwood. It's an uncrossing, unjinxing, um, and bad luck removal herb. And thanks to that, I think that it helps. I think it helps prevent situations where a car might hit you or furniture might be flying at you or similar and you will have good enough luck that you'll able to hit the brakes fast enough. Okay, our next herb is fennel. Fennel keeps the law away. <laughs> now, I am not suggesting that you go drive super recklessly or similar and that fennel is going to protect you from any consequence of those actions. But what I am suggesting is that fennel can keep the law away. And with fennel keeping the law away, any situation that you might find yourself unjustly pulled over or similar is the kind of energy that we are seeing with fennel. Um, I, I'm not trying to make unrealistic promises with fennel, but this is the energy that it is associated with. And um, I mean, I know that I uh, live in a very rural area, but I've been fine. I found it quite successful. I've never been pulled over. I've never gotten a ticket. That also might have something to do with the fact that I generally follow the rules and I don't speed, but, <laughs> but <laughs> regardless of that, I personally think fennel is great and it has a lot of really good uses for keeping unjust pullovers or similar out of the picture. Our next 
herb is not actually an herb. It is a lichen, lichen? I don't know how to pronounce that. It's the, f the moss stuff that grows on oak trees. Now, oak trees are associated with protection and the lichen that grows on it uh, follows that. I can and have historically collected this stuff in my own yard. This stuff is not collected from my yard. This is stuff I bought from the store because we've had a really dry few years and there is none of this oak moss growing on the trees. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but regardless, I had to buy some. It's store-bought. Store-bought's just fine. <laughs> It's a little tricky to get in there sometimes. Um, I also use this stuff on like spiritual protection as well. If you are somebody who used to purchase oils from my shop, you might've found this in my empath protection oil that I made. I love, love, love this stuff. I think it's great and I have found such great success with it. And the last ingredient that is an herb but isn't an herb but we're calling it an herb today for our for our uses is cedar cedar needles are these needles i don't know leaves cedar is an amazing cleansing and protection herb i don't know are we calling these herbs today i don't know but i love cedar for exactly that i think that it is really good for warding off essentially any kind of negativity because again when you're driving a huge part of safety sometimes does not come from our own choices but instead comes from the choices of others and because of that I think that cedar is really good for warding stuff off now the final ingredients for today goodness I've made a mess good thing my next video is me cleaning my altar <laughs> Um, the final ingredients for today, I think are a must. I think it is absolutely necessary, especially if you are gonna be putting this in your car for car safety. The most important thing you can do is put your regular, a little bit of the people <laughs> that are going to be regularly in the car, whether driving or passengers. So today I have a fingernail from my baby, which will be going in there some of my husband's hair. Hair has a lot of magical properties that you might find in other spells. Um, I think that's, that hair is one of the easiest ways to incorporate a little bit of somebody into something like a spell jar or similar for higher potency. Same with fingernails. And a little bit of my hair, which is much longer and more difficult to get in because of course it is. Goodness, I'm not gonna be able to get it in there. <laughs> All right, let's cork this bad boy off. So combined, we've got our, our basis for our protection spell jar to put in our car. Our next step is going to be lighting a candle to get its wax. Now you can do this a few different ways. Firstly, as you can see, I'm using a plain beeswax candle. This is not a requirement. Um, any, any kind of candle will do that is correspondently accurate. Um, I'm using a plain beeswax candle because I have found that beeswax, when it comes to protection magic, works very well. And white beeswax candles, at least for me, I've never been able to find them. Um, if you guys can find them locally, I think that's great. If you can't, I mean, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> But a white candle would do. Um, if you want to do some color correspondence, you can also use black or red. Both of those are very good for, well, black being good for absorbing negative energy or similar, and red is very good for protection. So is white, obviously. Um, but today we're gonna to be using a beeswax candle because that's what I've got for what I am using and I find the most helpful, so. <laughs> Now, I'm assuming, of course, that you are not going to be following along with me, but instead using this as inspiration for your own car pr protection jar. So I would recommend that if you are going to be repeating this, that you perhaps start your 
tea light or chime candle early. If you are using a chime candle that you pour on, it's a lot less necessary because they burn so quickly with the paraffin wax that you can pour it on. If you are going to use a chime candle made of beeswax or similar, I would recommend you start the candle as soon as you start your spell. That way there's plenty of wax to seal your bottle with. So I put mine back in that small cauldron that we used earlier, obviously, to hold our incense. <laughs> uh, mostly just to keep the mess from getting anywhere. Uh, but I'm just going to pour it on the top to seal it. Now, the frustrating part about this, at least for me, is that this particular one comes in a whack or a plastic container. And therefore, I am burning plastic. Only a little bit, but enough to be annoying. <laughs> We're going to let this completely cool down and then we're going to come back to do our final step. Now, once our jar has cooled down and our wax is nice and hard, in my case, we've got these little uh, hairs sticking out of it, which is a little funny. <laughs> we are going to get our last thing, which is some red twine, some red yarn or similar. And this basically is so that we we're going to be able to hang it up from our rear view mirror if we want to, but simultaneously red corresponds with protection. Now, I'm not gonna lie here and tell you guys that I know a lot about knot magic, cause I don't, I just don't. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of amazing practitioners out there who can tell you a whole bunch of really, really cool things about knot magic that could maybe take this up a level. I am not that girl. <laughs> so starting off, I've got two pieces of yarn here that I have tied together so that way they make an X. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this, and we're gonna attach it to our bottle. Now, I use the beeswax, right? So the beeswax, you can literally just push it in and it will stay as a firm holding spot. <laughs> Um, and then what we're going to do here is we are going to take our yarn or thread or twine or whatever you're using and we're going to bring it around the lip here and we're going to tie it to their paralleled ones, like the paralleled cross <laughs> and we're going to repeat this on all sides. So I'll probably speed up the video here so that way you don't have to just sit and watch me fumble <laughs> to tie all these. I'm gonna take this around to this side. Now, if you do this right, <laughs> when we get these all tied here, you should have a total of four knots. So we've done one, two, then this will be three, four. There's birds singing outside right now. It's so nice. So we've got four. Then we can go up here, pulling it up high. We've got our one knot from there and the four on this side making five. Well, we wanna have two more knots, making a total of seven. So we're gonna pull it through. Ooh, hoo, hoo, if it'll lightly come through. <laughs> so that's one. We're gonna do one more just to secure it. And all together, that puts us at seven knots. Seven red knots for protection. And now, you can hang this little jar from your rear view mirror, 
or you can do your knots in a different way so that way you can put it in your glove box or similar but all together at the end we now have a car safety protection jar so i hope that this helps and i would really love to see your guys's when you make them uh, if you follow me on social media you should tag me in yours i'd love to see them all right good luck and happy spellcasting everyone Thank you.